Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Melissa Green, a Technology Accessibility Specialist with the Center for Instructional Technologies Accessibility Team. Our team works to ensure that all technology users, including those with disabilities, have a functional and accessible technology experience with the university's websites and the technologies we use for teaching, learning, and conducting the business of the university. You can find more information about our efforts on our website at accessibility.ua.edu. A quick moment for housekeeping. I have muted everyone by default, so we won't be disrupted by latecomers. But when you wish to speak, just select the microphone option in the Zoom control bars to mute or unmute yourself. You can also choose to have your camera on or off, uh, but please do mute your microphone when you're not speaking. When I'm talking or sharing my screen, uh, please indicate in the chat box if you can't see or hear something. And finally, you're welcome to use the chat box throughout. I may not be able to keep a close eye on it while I'm talking, but I'll do my best to check in every once in a while. And if I don't see your question or comment immediately, um, I will come back to it at the end. This slide includes a picture of me. I have my webcam turned off today, but I thought you might like to see who you're speaking with. Uh, during today's webinar, we'll take a quick look at Blackboard Ally for LMS, a product that integrates with the Blackboard Learning Management System to help make digital course content more accessible. The Center for Instructional Technology is thrilled to share that we are now piloting Blackboard Ally for LMS during the spring 2020 semester. Ally helps make digital course content more accessible um, in a couple different ways. Uh, one, it automatically provides alternative formats such as HTML, audio, EPUB, and electronic braille. Um, and another way that it helps make course content more accessible is by providing instructor feedback and guidance on fixing accessibility issues in a course. Uh, let's take a quick look at how it works. First, Ally uses machine learning algorithms to automatically provide alternative formats for course content throughout your entire institution. This gives students immediate access to more accessible alternatives such as semantic HTML, audio, EPUB, electronic braille, and more without any manual intervention from the institution or instructor. Ally also checks and scores course content. It then provides feedback and detailed guidance on how to fix the identified accessibility issues to the instructor, all within the context of the learning management system. This allows instructors to see which items in their course have accessibility issues and fix them before students start to use the content. Lastly, Ally provides a means to understand how the institution is doing in terms of accessibility and analyzes course content into an institution-wide report. This report provides administrators a deep and rich understanding of not only how the institution is performing, but how things are evolving and where the problems are. With this kind of insight, informed decisions can be made into how to further improve accessibility at the institution. Ally quickly provides a level of insight that most institutions don't have access to. All of Ally's features work together to move any institution up on the accessibility spectrum, from the automated generation of alternative accessible formats to in-context instructor feedback and institutional reporting. Ally works hard in making course content more accessible. Taking a closer look at the three ways Ally helps make instructors make their course content um, more accessible. First, Ally creates alternative formats of your course files based on the original. Uh, 
These formats are made available with the original file uploaded to the course, so students can find everything in one convenient location, the original source file as well as the alternatives. You, as the instructor or instructional designer, don't need to do anything. Um, once Ally is enabled in a course, the alternative formats are created for you. Um, if you want, you can disable alternative formats for any individual content item for whatever reason. Let's take a look at that um, in action in a demonstration course. Um, so what we're looking at here is a demo course set up in Blackboard Learn in which Ally has been enabled. I'm going to go to the course content and we're viewing this um, from the instructor view. So this is uh, similar to what an instructor or instructional designer would see in a course in which Ally is enabled. Um, as has been mentioned, Ally can provide alternative formats for files uploaded to the course. Um, Ally generates alternative formats for PDFs, Word, PowerPoint, OpenOffice, LibreOffice, and HTML file types. A student can view the list of alternative formats by selecting the menu beside a file attached to your course and then selecting alternative formats. So the menu looks like uh, the letter A for Ally um, as well as a down arrow representing uh, the option to download. So a student would see this um, A and arrow and access those alternative formats by selecting the icon. So I'm going to do that now. Um, I've uploaded a PowerPoint to the course. We can see that the file extension is PPTX for a PowerPoint file type. Ally has automatically generated several alternative formats for this file that I'll access now by selecting alternative formats. The download alternative formats menu opens and here's where the student could download an alternative file type. The formats that are generated depend on the original file uploaded and include a tagged PDF which is a structured PDF uh, for improved use with assistive technology like a screen reader or a switch. HTML which is good for viewing in the browser and on mobile devices. EPUB for reading um, in an ebook reader on an iPad um, or other ebook reading apps. Electronic Braille, which is a BRF or Braille ready format file for use with electronic Braille displays. MP3, um, an MP3 version for listening. So that's an audio file that's generated uh, using text to speech technology in a translated version, which is a machine translated version of the original file. So that uses a technology similar to Google Translate to offer a translated version in one of um, dozens of languages. So the student is able to access and self-serve these different file types without the instructor having to do anything. Um, if you want, as an instructor, you can turn off alternative formats for individual files. So to do so, the instructor would select uh, the menu beside the download alternative formats heading, which I'm doing now, and then select disable alternative formats for this file. Um, if you change your mind, you can enable it again later. Um, and then when you're finished, you can select cancel or close. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this out. Alternative formats are necessary for some and beneficial for all. Uh, some of the benefits that alternative formats offer for teaching and learning. Um, alternative formats can provide higher quality alternatives. The readability of course materials can affect comprehension and study practices. So if the original course file is, let's say, a scanned PDF that students can't highlight, copy paste, or keyword search, they can try the ocr PDF instead uh, for an editable, easier to read document. Or if the font of the original is hard to read, they can try the EPUB format to customize the font and co color contrast. Um, alternative formats can also enhance understanding. Um, when we engage different senses, like reading a text and listening to a text, we activate different parts of the brain, which can enhance our understanding. 
So students might try reading the tagged PDF first and then listening to the audio MP3 for review. Or if they're struggling to understand the text, they might try listening and reading at the same time. Alternative formats can also improve time management um, with the busy schedules that they have. It's important that students maximize time on task and study opportunities in order to reach their learning goals. If they're reading on a mobile device, they might try the HTML format for a file that's responsive to the screen size so they can read faster and with less distractions. Um, or listen to the audio MP3 when they're on the go for extra time reviewing their materials. And finally, for students with disabilities, Blackboard Ally creates the alternatives necessary for access. Uh, audio and electronic braille alternatives for students with visual disabilities, semantic HTML for use with screen readers, and so on. So lots of benefits there uh, to all learners. So alternative formats are student facing. Uh, the remaining features we'll look at today are for use by instructors and instructional designers and are not visible to students. First, accessibility score indicators. Ally checks accessibility for your new and existing course content. And to measure accessibility, Ally assigns your content an accessibility score. Each score is composed of both a numerical indicator, a number, um, and a colored gauge that reflects that number. And we're going to take a look at this um, in the Blackboard environment. Uh, really quickly before we do that, I just want to demonstrate, I said that the alternative formats are um, student facing and these other features are instructor facing. I'll enter the student preview mode just so you can see the difference in how that appears. So we're now viewing the course um, as a student and you can see that just uh, the alternative formats download option is available to the student. The colored gauges that indicate the accessibility of the content are not present. I'm exiting that student preview now and returning to the instructor view. So as I mentioned, um, Ally checks the accessibility for your course content and assigns your content an accessibility score. Um, an icon indicates the level of accessibility. A high score indicated with a green icon means your file is more accessible. Uh, while a red icon means your file is less accessible. There's also text labels that accompany these colored labels. Um, so I'm hovering over an orange accessibility score label uh, assigned to the traditions before PowerPoint. And when I do that, we can see that that corresponds with the accessibility score medium. The red gauge corresponds with the accessibility score low. The green gauge corresponds with the accessibility score good or perfect or high or perfect that is. You select the icon to view the accessibility score and open the instructor feedback. I'm going to select the low score icon next to this UA traditions before Word document. So this is a Word document that I know has several accessibility issues that I've uploaded to the course and I'm now selecting uh, the accessibility score to get some more information about the issues that are present. Ally shows you a preview of the document's content as well as detailed feedback and support to help you fix the accessibility issues. So you can use the tools above the preview to explore the issues in your document. Um, so in the toolbar at the top of the screen above the preview, we have the ability to navigate from page to page, as I'm doing now. We have the ability to navigate um, through the particular issues and have them highlighted in the document visually. If that highlighting is visually distracting to you or you otherwise uh, don't wish to use it, you can toggle that on and off. You have the ability to zoom in and out to see uh, more or less at, of the document at any given time and the ability to download the original document, um, which are offered actually in several spots as you may need to make some adjustments to it to make it more accessible.
So you can use these tools above the preview to explore the issues in the document. You can also select all issues to see every issue in the file. I'm doing that now. So all issues um, is represented by the eye information icon and, and the text all issues in the right sidebar. Um, this gives us a view of every issue in the particular file. The all issues view also shows how much the score can improve by fixing this issue. So for example, um, the first issue listed for this particular file is this document contains images that are missing a description. And we're told that if we address this particular issue, we can increase the accessibility score up to 47%. Um, and this is just one of several issues in the file. Other issues present in this particular file are this document does not have headings. This document contains tables that are missing headers. And this document contains text with insufficient contrast. If we want to address any one of these issues, we would select uh, the fix button adjacent to the issue, which I'm gonna do now for the first issue. This document contains images that are missing a description. I'm selecting fix. And fix, um, allows us to learn more about each accessibility issue and why it's important to fix. You can select what this means uh, to learn more about the issue. In this case, what an image description is and why it's important to use them. And I really like this uh, why it's important to use them or why it's important to address these issues. Because um, while it does address accessibility for students with disabilities, it also discusses um, why these improvements can make a difference for students of all abilities. So for example, image descriptions facilitate searching and provide better context, in addition to being essential for students with visual disabilities who rely on them to access the content and function of an image. The other option for any individual issue is um, how to fix or how to add. So I'm gonna select that now. And we actually get step-by-step -step instructions for how to fix the issues in our preferred software. Um, so let's say that I created this file in Microsoft Office 365, or I'm going to use Microsoft Office 365 to fix it. I could um, locate the file on my computer or download it here in context, and then select the instructions for the software I'll be working with, in my case, Office 365. And then again, access those step-by-step -step instructions for how to, um, in this case, add image descriptions. And after following those instructions and some general guidance on how to write a good description, um, I'm prompted to save the document, then I'll select next, and I'm prompted to upload the revised version. And after uploading the revised version, um, the revision replaces the original, and this content item and the course uh, overall are rescored, uh, reevaluated for accessibility. Currently, Allied checks files in these formats, uh, PDF, Microsoft Word, Microsoft PowerPoint, OpenOffice or LibreOffice files, uploaded HTML files, image files, um, and WYSIWYG or visual text editor content. So there's a lot of different spots in Blackboard Learn where you might be using the WYSIWYG or visual editor. So basically think of a spot where you'd be typing text um, and possibly um, embedding an image or video. That's usually done through that WYSIWYG or visual editor. And then finally, Ally will also check um, YouTube videos that are embedded in WYSIWYG or visual text box editor content. What Ally checks for a YouTube video is the presence of um, uploaded or edited captions versus automatic captions. Um, so Ally will alert you as to um, whether a video just has auto captions, which are rarely uh, sufficiently accurate enough to be accessible, or if someone has uploaded a caption file or uh, edited uh, the captions in YouTube.
Moving on to the next way that Ally helps instructors improve the accessibility of their course content. Um, in addition to the file level information, Ally provides a course accessibility report that provides an accessibility summary and overview at the course level, showing an accessibility score for the entire course, a distribution of course content by content type, and a list of all of the issues identified in the course. Um, instructors can see the course content items that have issues, and they can then access the instructor feedback from the report to fix the issue. Um, the report helps instructors determine priority, and it gives options for order of fixing. Uh, for example, content with the most severe issues first, um, or perhaps starting with the content that's easiest to fix. We'll take a look at the course accessibility report uh, in our demo course. So I'm closing um, the instructor feedback for a specific file. In the left sidebar menu under course tools, there's a link uh, titled course accessibility report. That's what we'll use to access the report for this particular course. So I'm selecting it now. This is the accessibility report for this specific course. At the top on the left, we have our course accessibility score at 49%. Uh, below that, we have three different boxes. One of the boxes uh, visually on the left side of the screen is showing all course content. So it's visually indicating through a chart as well as some text, the total amount of PDFs, Word documents, presentation, images and HTML files in the course. There's a view button that when selected, which I'm gonna do now, is going to take you to a list of all of the content in that course so that the instructor or instructional designer can choose to navigate through the accessibility improvements this way. Uh, by default, low scoring content is listed first. Um, so, you know, in this particular class, we're starting with a scanned PDF document that has a score of zero. Um, this next lowest scoring item is an image with an accessibility score of 25% and so on. That's the default view. If you wish, you can um, sort from highest to lowest instead by selecting score and that will um, sort of resort the items in this particular view. You can see the file name for each content item. So in this first row, uh, the file named scanned document is a PDF and it has a 0%. If the instructor would like to start fixing this item from here, all they need to do is select the uh, red low score icon that's showing the 0%, which I'll do now. And that will launch that instructor feedback, the same instructor feedback that we get if we select in individual items in the context of the course. This is a PDF. Um, earlier we were looking at a Word document. I'll just point out that the guidance is a little different depending on what type of file. So in this case, um, again, in the toolbar at the top of the screen, we get the different options for interacting with the content. In the right sidebar, we get the score for this particular item. Um, we get the issue that's present. Um, in this case, the problem is that it's a scanned PDF. If we select what this means, we find out sort of why this is problematic. For example, scanned documents uh, can prevent searching, prevent copying and pasting. They can be unusable, unusable for students with visual impairments, use screen readers, and can be hard to read um, for anyone. And then just as with the Word document, if we wanted to fix this particular issue, we could select how to fix this and are walked through step by step how to address this issue. In this case, for a scanned PDF, we're prompted um, first, if we have one, to upload an original text-based version of the file instead. So if we say yes, that we are able to do that, we're prompted to make that upload. If not, um, we're prompted to check to see if this is a library reference. A common type of scanned document in a course is um, a reading. So a chapter from a book or an academic journal article or some other type of reading that um, 
has been printed and scanned sometimes multiple times and uploaded to a course. A lot of these resources are available in library databases in a more accessible format. Um, so in the case of a scanned document, we're prompted to kind of track that down and provide the information there. But if not, um, again, we're going to get some guidance on how to work with uh, the existing scanned file. So again, that was um, access from the list of course content, that instructor feedback. Returning to the overview, uh, the second way that instructors can interact with this report is the box visually near the top right where it says content with easiest issues to fix. Um, in this case, there are six content items. Selecting the start button, which I'm going to do now, is going to take us to a view uh, listing all of the content items, uh, showing the issues per document and the score. So again, uh, selecting the score icon will launch that instructor feedback. So this um, Big Al image is one of the six easiest items to fix in the class. I'm going to select the accessibility score icon to go to the instructor feedback. And the issue with this uh, particular piece of content is that it's missing a description. It's an image that doesn't have a description. So here um, we could bring that accessibility score from 25% to 100% simply by entering a description of the content or the function of the image or indicating that the image is decorative. So that's definitely one of the easier ones to fix. I'm going to close the instructor feedback for this particular item and return to the overview. The third option is to fix low scoring content. Uh, once again, pressing the start button, which I'll do now, is going to give you a list of all of the content items that are um, particularly low scoring, showing the issues per document and then the score. And again, selecting the score icon will launch that instructor feedback again. Returning to the overview, the final way instructors can use this report is to see a list of all of the accessibility issues that exist in the course. So as you scroll further down the screen, under the heading of remaining issues, there's one row per issue. So for example, um, the first row indicates that there is a PDF document that is scanned but not OCR'd. Um, there is one content item affected by this issue. If I select this row, um, it's going to show me the documents or content items that have this particular issue. I'm going to go back to the list and look at the second item, which affects seven content items. So the seven content items in the course have contrast issues. And again, if I select um, this row, I can get a breakdown of what those seven items are. And if I select the accessibility score, I can navigate to the instructor feedback that will um, sort of walk me through the process of correcting this particular issue. Um, I can get that in browser preview and guidance on fixing the problems. Um, that's all I have for us today. As I mentioned, we are currently piloting Blackboard Ally for LMS this spring 2020 semester, which means we are turning it on for individual courses by request. Uh, because you registered for this webinar today, I'll be following up with you with an email later this week, and that message will include a mechanism for requesting Ally be enabled in courses that you specify. Um, eventually, either this summer or this fall, Ally will be enabled in all Blackboard Learn courses by default. Um, we are here to help. I hope you'll visit us at accessibility.ua.edu or reach out to us at accessibility.ua.edu. I'm uh, providing that contact information in the chat box. I'm going to stop the recording um, so that if you have questions or thoughts to share, um, you can feel free to unmute your mic and share them now or type them in the chat box.